This conference yeah. will now be recorded. Do you see any symbol or something on your screen which says it's yes, recorded? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Great. so it has started recording. Yeah, so let's get started. So guys, yeah. uh, if you are tweeting anything about this session or something, uh, don't forget to use the following handles and the following hashtag theme Katarka. So it's a really good initiative which have been started by the group leaders Roshan, Swati and Gaurav. Uh, this is the second week and uh, so don't forget to tweet about the event or things which you learn. Head over to Twitter, use this handles, use the hashtag and tweet out. And as I introduce myself, this is a uh, pretty good uh, to sum things up and to get started with my session with a session. And uh, this is my Twitter handle as well. So yeah, let's get started. Yeah, so Virup, agenda. I, I know I'm, I'm I know I'm interrupting, but uh, I know because you've not started, so it's, it's a nice picture. You should update. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Russian. Thank you, for, thanks for that. So. Uh, Agenda for today's session would be we would uh, firstly walk through the introduction of Heroku. What is it? And uh, what are the advantages and what are the type of, uh, you know, uh, developments along with custom apps you can achieve over the platform? Uh, we would walk you through it first and then I'll then we would go and see what is a post trace. Then we would uh, talk about Heroku Connect which basically allows you to connect your Salesforce org and uh, Salesforce org and Heroku. Basically, you can you know retrieve data and do stuff with it. Then we would have a small demo of deploying a custom app and how you can provision Postgres. And uh, later we would see that how you can you know de develop custom apps and develop custom apps locally and you can deploy it to Heroku and make it widely available at ease and available for all so heroku deploying on hello heroku will definitely uh, mean that your apps are highly scalable fault tolerant and reliable and available at any point of time and we would also demo how we can deploy a custom app on heroku and last but not the least we would design about we would discuss about the possibilities of designing highly scalable applications on the heroku platform we would discuss about the integration scenarios, what we can achieve with Salesforce and Heroku, making use of the best to design a custom app. We would walk through the design and you know discuss stuff of how we can achieve it. So this is the basic agenda for today. Uh, so uh, let's get started and I'll give with the topic introduction to Heroku. So what is Heroku? So Heroku is a platform, is a platform and a platform as a service where you can develop and host custom apps with just few clicks. So Heroku is platform as a service which allows you to build and deploy custom scalable apps, making it available to anyone and accessible to anyone. So Heroku is platform as a service which uh, basically serves as a hosting platform and comes with plenty of you know uh, add-on resources such as uh, you have the postgres database available on heroku platform which you can attach to your app and you can store the data in the postgres table you have plenty of resources which you can utilize and uh, make it uh, available for your app to make it highly scalable and available now, why you should choose Heroku? Why not any other platform as a service or infrastructure as a service? You might have heard about AWS, the Amazon Web Services. So when it comes to Amazon Web Services, you would need to have an idea of uh, how you want to manage your infrastructure. Basically, if you are creating an EC2 instance or uh, defining a, you know, a AWS a virtual private cloud, you would need some idea on how to configure and manage those things up. You would need to define the drives or hard drives which your instance should use. And you should have a basic idea and you should be responsible for managing it out. But in case of Heroku, that is not needed or not applicable. Heroku is a fully managed platform and 
it scales and allows develop developers to be more productive because you need not worry about managing any of the infrastructure things you just need to focus or you can just focus on developing your apps and you know you can just quickly host and deploy it over the heroku platform you need not worry about defining a instance taking care of the infrastructure hardware patching the system patching the hardware drivers or any of the things let's such as security security or anything else everything is managed and taken care by the heroku platform so that is how you know you can choose over uh, AWS infrastructure as a service or Heroku. So Heroku is basically hosted on AWS. So this picture would give you an idea about the infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. So you can see here the AWS serves as the infrastructure layer for the Heroku platform. The platform is built and developed over the AWS services, utilizing the AWS services to make it easier for you, you know, to deploy and develop on the platform. You need not worry, as I just said, you need not worry about managing the infrastructure, such as your operating systems, drivers, or network or security or anything. It is fully managed. You just need to deploy your app, uh, provision resources whatever you need for your app accordingly and you are just there just fully focused on developing your app only that and not into managing any of the infrastructures so that is one of the biggest advantages why salesforce uh, heroku is widely used over by enterprise very large enterprise uh, enterprises to manage their uh, customers using their custom apps and salesforce combiningly or any other systems which they have so you know this uh, this is a very good uh, feature which is which heroku looks after it is fully managed and uh, as i said about scaling so scaling would probably mean that uh, you have your app hosted on the heroku platform that means it is available to anyone and everyone around the world so when number of requests comes in suppose you run a website and you have a offer running at this moment of time so at this moment of time the website uh, consumption rate has increased gradually over the period of time so this means that your resources utilization the infrastructure utilization would also increase gradually so to manage that you have all the facilities what you need to scale so that is termed as scaling scaling would mean provisioning of more resources we would uh, later check in what resources are available on the heroku platform what resources you can add on to your app to make it more scalable scalability is nothing but making or running your app available 24 by 7 no matter what the consumption rate is it might be 500 users or 1000 users or 2000 users or lakhs or millions of users at a single point of time but your system would be up and running and available at any point of time that is scaling with resources fault tolerance and high availability so fault tolerance is you know uh, even so fault tolerance and this everything this concepts come under the infrastructure management so aws has their uh, instances running in multiple regions and regions have you know uh, uh what to say so their instances are available over various regions of the world and those regions have you know availability zones so if you have worked on aws at any point of time you might be aware of this uh, 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 uh definitions or you know infrastructure uh, uh, infrastructure architecture so if any instance is hosted over a particular region that region would have multiple data centers located uh, at different and those will have or those will act as availability zones so to make your support who uses the aws infrastructure to leverage these facilities 
to make it highly available for your customers no matter what even an instance is down it can shift over to the another instance and keep on running. so those are the tools you need to define when you are managing your infrastructure or an instance for a particular region which aws takes care of. if you have an ec2 instance hosted on a region for example and if a region goes out with power shortage or any breakouts your system, your instance would still be running that is all taken care by aws and uh, in, now quickly coming back again apart from this infrastructure things to heroku now what is a dashboard so dashboard place where you can you know have a complete view of your apps and the resources and the metrics for your app or the activity whatever is happening to your app is the demand high you need to scale the app or uh, you need to add more resources to it anything and everything you can go and check it out on the heroku dashboard we will quickly see how a heroku dashboard looks like so let me just go over to my heroku account So when you go to heroku-heroku.com, uh, you see land you up to the dashboard of the apps which you have in the account. So these are the few apps which I have right now, and I'll just simply open an app and show you up how a dashboard looks like. So this is the dashboard for my particular app and this is how it looks you have everything whatever you need to track the metrics or activities for your app we will get back to this later when we are doing a demo of how to deploy a custom app and provision a postgres so that is how a dashboard looks like we would uh, jump in into more detail at a later point of time so that was dashboard where you can track the resources the, all the activities related to app whatever it is happening to have a crystal clear view of all and everything related to your app so you can have it or view it on your dashboard it is a single uh, user interface which can give you details about your app and anything related to your app so it is completely based on clicks Within a few clicks, you can uh, provision resources, you can deploy an app. So everything can be done using the Heroku dashboard. Also, you have the Heroku CLI. You can install the Heroku CLI locally over your systems and you can create apps using your CLI directly and also deploy your apps using the Heroku CLI. So if you wanna install your Heroku CLI, you would need to have a node package manager you can just search it up in google how to install install a node node package manager and once you have node package manager in your system you would be good to go or you can even download the hero cli from the website you know uh, so just let me just show you you know so if you don't want to go over to the dashboard and want to achieve things using heroku cli you can download the heroku cli and install it in your system so if you just search heroku cli you would, the very first link would take you up to the resource page where you can download and install the heroku cli according to your system os requirements so you can download it for mac os if you are using the system you can download it for windows as well ubuntu and everything else so but make sure that you have a npm node package manager installed so once you install everything you can leverage and utilize the features whatever is made available using the heroku cli so you know uh, after you have 
installed the Heroku CLI, you can type in commands such as Heroku login. You need not open your browser or do anything. Just type in Heroku login. It would open up the browser for you and take you to the login page if you have an Heroku account. So log in using the credentials and make use of it. So simple, you know. So take me and this says login to the Heroku CLI. I press on login and this would take me, you know, I'll be logged in and I'll be accessing all the resources which are available on my Heroku account. You can see here I'm logged in. This is my username for my account and uh, i can leverage i can create a heroku app i can deploy an heroku app uh i can i can create an app i can deploy an app i can provision resources i can provision a post trace and do whatever i want to using the heroku cli but if you want to resist all of this typing of commands and everything dashboard is the place you need to go so simply log in head over to heroku.com log in simply and you would land up in your dashboard simple as that where you would have the option of creating apps and doing whatever you want to do so that was something about the heroku cli and the heroku dashboard which is a user interface for available for you to create and deploy apps based on clicks and not commands if you want to use commands then the Heroku CLI is always available for you. So coming back to the presentation. So these are the few things or the basic introduction about Heroku. You know, and what are the things you can achieve using a dashboard we have discussed so far. And as I said, this schema demonstra demonstrates that uh, Heroku is a platform and it is leveraging the service of Amazon Web Services, basically the, known as the AWS black infrastructure or platform. So it uses AWS to manage its infrastructure, thus allowing you to be fully unaware of it because it is completely managed by the Heroku at a backend. You need not worry about the infrastructure or anything. So Heroku is platform as a service and AWS as infrastructure as a service. So this schema clearly defines it, how it is hosted or how Heroku runs basically at a backend level. So we have seen the, of the Heroku dashboard just right now. So the dashboard is the primary web interface, you know, for interacting with the Heroku platform. So you can perform tasks such as creating, deleting an app, renaming the app, viewing the app metrics, such as uh, the deployment of resources or the provisioning of resources. You can remove the resources which is provisioned to your app. Provisioning here is nothing but creating. It is a term basically used when you are working on platforms uh, infrastructures are provided to you as a service. So provisioning is nothing but creating. Don't get confused over here. So the dashboard provides this features or uh, facilities which you can perform with just few clicks over the UI. So you can configure add-ons, you can manage your Heroku teams. Again, those Heroku teams and everything would be, you know, uh, suppose I'm a user, I have developed this app and a new person has recently joined in, in your team and wants to be a collaborator to your app. So you can provide access to the app using the credentials of that particular user. If that user has a Heroku account, you can basically allow him access by adding him to the Heroku teams and adding him as a collaborator for your app. So those are Heroku teams which allows you to uh, add more collaborators for the app which you are working on and is hosted on the platform. Pipelines are nothing but again uh, comes or relates to continuous integration and continuous development. You can uh, create a pipeline for your app where you can, you know, uh, connect or authorize to your source of version control and allow collaborators to 
contribute or make changes and finally deploy it to your production. So pipeline helps you achieve this. Everything is based on clicks. You need not write code for any of this, whatever is listed down here. Everything is based over clicks and is completely manageable over the UI. And you can configure development using your gits and your uh, development environments, whatever you have. Whatever the resources you are using that might come to you at a cost. Everything is not free as we know. And uh, we have uh, uh, Heroku has plans for everything. So if you want to provision a uh, Postgres database to your app, there are tiles such as free or monthly based tiles based on the usage of your app. If your uh, usage has exceeded a particular point of time, you would need to provision a resource which might come to you at a time. So whatever the plans or the billing information or the usage you have, you can track it down on the Heroku dashboard. So everything related to billing of your resources, the resources which are being used and consumed by your apps, everything would be available at a one-stop go, which is your Heroku dashboard. So that was about Heroku dashboard at detail. And next we would check what are the languages which are supported for Heroku or languages which are supported by Heroku. So these are the few languages which are listed down which Heroku supports. So if you are creating or you have a Java app created and you want to host it on your a Heroku platform, then you can leverage the build, build packs which would basically read instructions from your proc file defined at your app and deploy it on your Heroku platform. So if you're, if you're building or developing apps using any of these languages which Heroku supports, you are free to leverage and utilize the features which are provided by the Heroku platform. So if you're creating a Node.js app or a Java app or a PHP app or maybe a Python app or any of the languages mentioned here, you can deploy your custom app over the platform and make use of the resources. So these are the few languages which Heroku supports and this allows you to make, uh, dip, uh, make or deploy your app and host it over the platform and ultimately making it available for your end users. So uh, I have discussed about the Heroku dashboard, what is Heroku and why you, why you can choose Heroku over AWS and the type of languages it supports. So if you have any doubts or questions so far, please post it in the questions box. We would probably take it up at the end of the session. So moving on. So what are the data services which are being provided by the Heroku? So we have checked one is the Heroku CLI, which allows you to do lo local development over your system, create apps, deploy it, just using your uh, CLI. You know, uh, you need not uh, go over to anywhere. If you are a hardcore developer, you like typing in commands over your CLI, or uh, if you wanna, destroy a resource which is provisioned to your app, you can just type in commands such as uh, if I have a Heroku destroy and your uh, resource name. So if I have a resource provisioned with this, so this resource attached to my particular app will be destroyed. So these are the few commands you can leverage and are available on the Heroku Dev Center. You can go and check it out whatever the commands you can utilize. But as always, if you don't want to type in commands or use the CLI, you have you always have the dashboard to make use of. You know, uh, you can go over to the dashboard, do the same things which you can achieve through the CLI. There's no difference for the list of things you can achieve using the CLI or the dashboard. Every activity which you can do using the CLI can also be done using the dashboard. 
So basically, you can you can carry out and leverage the UI as I suggest to or I basically do instead of typing in commands. But some of the most of the times when I am doing a local development, suppose I'm creating a Node.js app using a Node package manager, and I would just want to quickly deploy it without navigating to the browser, typing in everything. I just quickly type in the commands and make use of it. So let's get started with the Heroku data services. So these are the services which uh, Heroku provides, you know. So first is the Heroku Postgres, which is the database basically provided by Heroku. And uh, it, you can provision the Heroku Postgres database and make it available for your app with just few clicks or leveraging the CLI and uh, if you are pulling your data from salesforce and storing it into this database you can run sql queries to retrieve data from the heroku app basically suppose you have a custom app posted on heroku and you are retrieving uh, data from your accounts object which is basically your salesforce which is basically your salesforce instance so if you are pulling the data, the data is being stored in a Postgres and will be stored in a Postgres database. So for that, you need to provision your database, you know, and if your app is, if, uh, if you are using the app for third party users, maybe on a website or something, if you want to query the same data, if you want to query the Salesforce data, you need to run SQL services so select first name last name from account modified by the timestamp so such kind of queries you would need to run and uh, retrieve your data from the heroku app so whenever you are whenever you are running the sql queries it would retrieve the data which is stored in your progress postgres database so apart from the heroku postgres database the other types of services are Heroku Redis and Heroku Kafka. So Redis is nothing but acts as a key value pair and as a data store where you can store data in the format of a key value pair. So for an example, if you have a website running and uh, you, have, you are uh, hosting it on the Heroku platform and making it available to your end users, so now in order to you know uh, track the users sessions basically basically the session ids for your users if you want to track it uh, how much amount of time a uh, user is spending on my website you want to track a particular user with the amount of session time you're spending on your website so basically heroku redis allows you to do it because it is a key value storage data storage facility available so your user id can be the key and the value could be the session time spent on your particular website so if any one of you are developers on the salesforce platform you can relate that to a map so just as a map available in apex you it is a key value based data store service where you can utilize it and store the data where you would need to keep a track of the details which can uh, which relates or uh, which can have a key value pair kind of format and moving on to heroku kafka kafka is a platform driven messaging based uh, backend service which is utilized by the heroku platform so in salesforce we have platform events where uh, uh, events are consumed as in functions and a particular function can then perform or carry out tasks such as that uh, heroku platform provides us with kafka which is a managed and distributed streaming platform provided to us as a service there is nothing uh, which you would need to worry about the management or something but this is something which is available to you as a service you can consume the resources make use of it and uh, build or develop a event driven app so basically it would consume the 
events as functions and then carry out tasks accordingly. So a few use cases, we would also look into what could be the use cases where you would want to use Heroku, Redis or Kafka. So one of the use cases for Kafka would be, you know, queuing. So you have uh, plenty of requests flowing in from your users and you want to queue it. So elastic queuing would be one such use case for Heroku Kafka, where you would, uh, you know, queue the requests based on topics or uh, messages which are received to you as an event on the back end of the platform. And you can channelize those events or uh, requests into queues and then carry out tasks without hassling or you know uh, without letting the platform down or making it slow so it is a very powerful uh, streaming platform service which is available to us as a service so these are the few heroku data services which are provided by Heroku. So use cases are many here. So I'll just, uh, I discussed few and I'll uh, also walk you through a few more use cases where you can use this. But today we would be seeing how to provision a Heroku Postgres over a demo. And I'll just walk you through Heroku Redis and Kafka use cases where you can use it and how you can use it. Everything is available and achievable over clicks if you're using the dashboard. Now coming to the Heroku Postgres database, these are the uh, features of Heroku Postgres which are provided to you. Uh, data is crucial for any customers and thus the safety at Salesforce Trust is the number one value and they value the data security at the topmost thing. So your data is secured and uh, by all the compliance standards available to it, the Heroku backend team uh, conducts trials and audits against any patches or security threats which they receive, you know. Uh, so basically your data is safe. That and uh, continuous protection. So every change you write to your data are available as logs. If you have worked in AWS, AWS provides a feature such as AWS Cloud Trail, which would allow you to have a look into the, uh, you know, logs, which user has performed what, which user has made what changes or which users are provisioning the resources available to you. If you are uh, AWS, uh, administrator you would have view to it such as uh, managing other things as well but in heroku you need not worry about managing any of these things everything is taken care and provided to you as a service so your data is protected the, the heroku backend teams conduct audits and uh, checks whether your app uh, is safe from any of the threats or does it needs to run patches over the drivers where your data is located or stored and heroku postgres also provides the option of rolling back changes suppose if you are making changes to your data and something has went wrong you know and uh, you want to make change from the list of uh, records which are changed in a particular table. So tables, yeah, as I said, Heroku Postgres uses SQL. Everything or every data which you're storing in Postgres is stored in form of tables and records. And you would need to retrieve data using SQL, not SOQL. I'm repeating this, SQL, structured query language. You would need to use it and retrieve your data or insert data using SQL, you know. So if you have made changes mistakenly or if you want to roll back the changes made to your database, you have the feature to do it. And all of your data will be safe. You need not uh, worry about uh, the changes which are done unknowingly. And you have automated health checks for your databases and apps, whether is it available or is it down 
or do you need to add more resources to it so by resources i'm basically implying the resources available on heroku platform such as the database the dynos the slugs and build packs or whatever it is we will lately see what are slugs build packs and everything whatever you need to know to get started on heroku so heroku team does automated health checks for your app and the database for your data stored so that it ensures and gives you the trust that your app is running and your database is safe so high availability again so if you are hosting your apps on the heroku platform means it is highly available you have the option of scaling horizontally and scaling vertically scaling we would come into that later in the next few slides what how you can scale your app uh, by provisioning resources it's nothing but availability of your apps 24 24 by 7 no matter what the amount of requests are flowing in or the number of users who are using it it might be 500 at a time or 1 million at a time but if you are managing your app or posting your app on the heroku platform it is ensured that your apps are highly available no matter what leveraging the services provided by aws and Heroku Postgres also allows you to use private link. You know, if you want to keep your app private to a particular set of users or a particular set of collaborators, you can use the private link and uh, leverage the features which has which is provided. So Heroku Postgres database and private allows you to deploy apps or in a particular separate space where you can manage the access provided to your end users you can connect it with your amazon virtual private clouds where your ec2 instances are hosted you know and uh, keep it still private to your users by managing the permissions and access through a private link so Heroku Postgres stays on the Amazon private network and never traverses the public internet, thus making your app private and available to only particular set of users. So these are the few features which Heroku Postgres database provides us with. And uh, these are a few of the key features of Heroku Postgres. Forking is nothing but, you know, just uh, exactly copying a particular database but the difference would be if I am a particular developer or user who have created a particular app. When you click on fork the database, it would create an exact replica of the app or the database where you would be the user and you can make changes to the database in your own environment and then you can raise a pull request where I can accept the changes and make commit changes so if you use version controls such as Git, you might be aware of forking and how a forking works so heroku postgres also allows forking of the database and you have features such as data clips followers and credentials and settings followers are nothing but uh, read only replicas of a database so if you are following a database you would get all the notifications and you would be notified with whatever changes is happening to that particular database you know so that is one feature then you have data clips so data clips are critical to business and you can access query and view your data using sql queries it allows you to allow collaborate with other team members share the data or you know you can analyze your data perform out analytic analytical reporting using data clips or using the url which basically is generated after the database is processed so you can leverage the url you can access the database using the url as well so that is data clips 
on Heroku Postgres. And uh, each database comes with, uh, Hero each Heroku Postgres database comes with credentials and settings. If you have a third party external system and you want to access the database of your app, which is hosted on the Heroku platform, you would see a set of credentials and settings in the Heroku Postgres database, which you can use and leverage it to access the data for your third party apps. So basically the credentials would allow you to access the data stored in your Heroku Postgres. So uh, we discussed about the features which are available in Heroku Postgres. Quickly moving on to Redis. So as I said, Redis is an even driven uh, uh, service provided by Heroku to help consume events or messages as functions. And you can use those or utilize those functions to carry out different set of tasks. A few of the features would be operational expertise, high availability as always, and uh, private link. You know, if you don't wanna make it available to any other third party users and want to uh, make the, your app using the Redis features to, to a very finite set of users you can use or utilize it. So you can perform analytics as well, such as, you know, number of calls per command you are executing or active connections which you have consuming the bandwidth of your app. So you can all have the analytics available if you are using Heroku Redis. So it also allows you to leverage the powerful Heroku CLI experience. You can provision, connect, and configure Heroku Redis from Heroku CLI as well. Or also leveraging the use of the Heroku dashboard. And also you would get logs, real-time logs from the system. Uh, which would help you track to audit or maybe uh, do an analytical reporting using this add-on features. Now uh, coming to Kafka, as I said, uh, Kafka is a distributed messaging service which consumes events as functions, right? So this is a very powerful tool which you can leverage. So producers here would be someone or your end users who are uh, acting on on your particular app and using your app so using the app means they are providing certain set of instructions to be compiled in your app and with a set of instructions you would require to perform a certain set of functionalities so heroku kafka allows using it or allows uh, us to utilize those kind of features uh, features so consumers are something who are writing data to your or using and you or end users who are you know writing data and uh, producers would be someone who would be taking care of the actions on available on the heroku platform so everything is event driven here. You can take control of your events and you can use this to scale your app seamlessly utilizing the use of functions and uh, events. It is basically an event driven, event driven data storage feature available in Heroku. So these are a few of the Heroku Kafka features which we have. So coming over to access event streams in Heroku and Amazon VPCs, you can seamlessly and securely connect your Apache Kafka available on your Heroku app to one of the more resources available in your AWS instance. If you are using an AWS instance, it allows you to connect and uh, utilize the app using a private link and these are the few features you securely manage protected regular data streams you can use this to integrate with third-party apps and 
you know you can uh, allow it to scale easily by provisioning resources whenever and uh, whenever needed according to consumption so these are the few features of Heroku. And these are the few use cases, as I said. Uh, elastic queuing is one. Suppose a user uh, is using a website and performing a certain operation. Maybe he's buying a particular product on your website. He's making some clicks over the UI and is adding the product on your cart. At the same time, you know, uh, if the if you're running an offer and if the number of users using that website is huge then kafka would take care of the queuing making sure your heroku applications are available up and running so basically it would implement elastic queuing for you where all your requests would come in as events and based on the topics or whatever the features your users are using it would be distributed among into queues where um, certain set of actions moving forward one after the other so that is something about elastic queuing which is one of the most important features which Heroku Kafka provides you can perform analytics given the state of data which you are storing here in Kafka you have you can perform audit trails over your data such as uh, in AWS it is the cloud trail which gives you an entire log of events. So here it is Kafka for you, which would allow and do a reporting and analytic sort of thing. Also, this allows you to uh, utilize your app services as a microservice infrastructure, where you know each of the services are independent or functioning independently without depending on any other suppose you have a payment functionality and also a purchasing functionality implemented on your app this would be decoupled into microservices architecture where each of the services services would utilize dedicated resources provided to them and it's not being dependent on any or any other features you know so services as we said consumers are your end users and producers are somebody who are writing the data on your kafka so it can be scaled independently and it distributes the topics and replicates messages across multiple servers so that your app is highly available so these are the few things you know uh, which are provided to you as a service fully managed by Heroku so we discussed and saw about the Heroku Postgres which is the database primary database for your app where you can retrieve your data using SQL Redis is again a key value feature as I said if you want to track your user activity or if you want to implement a uh, cache functionality so if you are uh, if your app is a custom made website and you're hosting over the heroku basically if you might know http is a stateless protocol right you don't have the facility of uh, built-in data so if you want to build or cache that data and utilize it further to track down various functions or uh, provide your customer with a different set of uh, services according to his or her own interests then you can utilize the heroku redis and implement a caching data caching functionality over your app so cache, caching of the data would allow the data to be retrieved seamlessly and instantly when a particular user is using your app suppose i'm a user using your app and uh, i i may be i my i may be off from the website for about 10 15 minutes or an hour maybe then i come back 
again to the website. Suppose I want to purchase something, I have added that product to the cart. Somehow I uh, maybe got a call to do something else. So I got busy in some other engaging tasks and I just left the product added to my cart. Now, when I'm away from the website, it is crucial for you to cache and manage the data at the back end efficiently so that when the user comes in, he need not add it again. So whenever he, he comes back, it should be still available in your cart so that he can place and pro, uh, order instantly. So that is some that is an example of caching your data where you can uh, make your uh, apps data you know quickly available to your end users so that your user need not uh, go back and do the repetitive tasks again caching again is a trading mechanism which takes session ids and you know Kuretis is a perfect data store for you to utilize and store it so Heroku, Kafka, again, we saw message-driven platform streaming service provided to you on the Heroku platform. So these are the few Heroku data services that we looked through and discussed the key features as well with few use cases around. Now, uh, before we move on to you know, uh, the buzzwords in Heroku, we will quickly move on and see how we can quickly deploy an app on Heroku using the Heroku dashboard. You can also leverage Heroku CLI as well if you want to create an app. So I'll quickly navigate over and here I'm creating a Heroku app. I'll click on the new create and then i'll click create new app so there are some rules which uh, is to be followed while naming your app everything should be in lowercase no spaces are allowed and no special characters are allowed so these are the few things which you need to keep in mind if you are naming your app so i'll just quickly check whether this name is available for an app. So if a particular name is available for an app, it would show up here that it is available. Regions are nothing but where your instances would be running. These are nothing but AWS EC2 instances, which are run, which runs in this region, particular region. So after naming my app, I'll just click on create app. It's that easy. You know, so yeah, here here is my app already and set to be provisioned or uh, accessed all over the web, you know, uh, and I can add on more resources to it. I can uh, do whatever I want to. So see, that is how much time it takes to create an app on the Heroku. It is that easy and just takes few clicks if you are creating an Heroku app. Right. So if I click on open app, it would take me to the application which says, welcome to your new app. So if you want to type this into your own browsers at this moment of time, type in and check it is available to you right now at this point of time. So few clicks and your app is widely available to the entire world or to your entire set of users. So that is how you would create a Heroku app and deploy an Heroku app. Now, let's quickly add a resource, a Postgres database, which would allow you to store more data in your app. So this is my app. I head over to the resources tab here and I will search for the Postgres add-on. So whatever the resources which are available on the Heroku platform are provided to you as add-ons. 
if you want to use or uh, provision an add-on for your particular app simply head over to the resources tab and type on the resource which you want to provision you know so i'll just type heroku postgres here in my case and here it is over a few clicks it is available to me that whether you want to provision the database to your app so this again comes with uh, entire different tiers of plans so i'll be using the free version for using the other versions you would need a plan monthly plans based on the storage or the amount of data you want to store in your heroku app so i click on provision and the database is now attached to my app this is my app and i have my database attached to it within just few clicks later we will later we will go on and see how we can deploy a node.js app on heroku which uses salesforce components and salesforce data and how you can retrieve salesforce data using various methods so this is a quick demo of how you can create an app and provision a database you can see this is attached as a database if you have any data stored in it you can just simply run sql queries to retrieve that data so right now i have i don't have any data but i'll definitely show you a demo where i'll be pulling out data from my salesforce org storing it in my custom map on heroku and i'll show you how i can retrieve it using the sql query as well at a later point of time uh, as i discussed the dashboard would, would also show you about the health of your app whether it is available or is it down and this gives me the entire logs and uh, activity trails for my app so this shows me the metrics the size of my data size as there are no data in the database it, it says zero tables as of now created a few seconds ago and pretty much the other features which are unsupported because it is a free tire free plan for the postgres database right uh, i'll come back later to what the data clips are with a demo you will get a pretty clean idea what are the data clips you know and every other thing so if you wanna so if you have a mobile app custom mobile app uh, and you want to utilize the data which is stored in this heroku app and so for doing that you would need to establish a connection to this heroku app that is the first thing and to access the database you can do it using this credentials you know so if you click on view credentials that would show you the entire password or the uri and the username for that heroku postgres database you can access the data using the uri as well and you can make changes to it given you have defined your OAuth points or O data points to make changes to your data. So these are the few things which you can do, you know, to access the database outside the Heroku app. And you can you have the options to reset the database and also destroy database. Quickly moving on with the presentation. I am too excited to give the demo. I am pretty sure you would have a pretty clear idea once I walk you through the demo of deploying a custom app over Heroku. So these are the buzzwords you should be aware of when you're working in Heroku. Firstly is the Heroku dinos, then you have the slugs and build packs, then you have the Heroku private spaces and pipelines. So what are dinos, Heroku dinos? So Heroku is a platform as a service which provides its services in a container format. So it is a container driven platform as a service which allows you to run or uh, 
host your applications and run it within containers. So Dynos are nothing but Linux-based runtime containers, which allows you to you know run and process over the platform. Whatever the set of instructions you have defined in your code would be run in a container, which processes it. So as the definition says, it is pretty clear. They will execute the processes and provide responses to you. Whatever the instructions, set of instructions you provide to your app as code, those would be compiled and uh, executed in a runtime container. And the runtime container will provide you the response once the compilation or execution for your app is complete. Moving on to slugs and build packs. So you have written the source code for your particular app. Now, when you deploy it to Heroku using uh, the Heroku CLI or maybe the Git GitHub, you have deployed an app to Heroku. Now, build packs are responsible for uh, transforming the source code into bytecode. Bytecodes are nothing but system understandable or machine understandable code. So when you deploy your app or uh, deploy your code onto the Heroku platform, build packs are the ones which are responsible for running it, running in the sense compiling it, and it is converted into bytecode then. So build packs are basically essential. Suppose if I am deploying a Node.js app, uh, when I deploy the app to the Heroku platform, a Node.js build pack would be added automatically to the app. You need not worry about that. Or if you wanna add any other build packs manually, you have the option to do that as well. Now, what are the functionality of slugs over build packs. So when your code is compiled and executed into bytecode, slugs are responsible for processing it and passing it to dynos, which would ultimately execute the final processing and provide you with response. So Please uh, focus here, Heroku Dynos uh, runtime containers providing you the ability to run your app over the platform. Build packs are nothing but compiling your custom code, custom app, giving us uh, giving the bytecode, processing the bytecode, and then the uh, bytecode is finally passed on to the slugs, which then Com compresses and packages it and passes on to the dynos for further running or processing of your app. So these are the uh, few uh, buzzwords which you should be aware of when you are working on Heroku platform, basically. And Heroku pipelines. Uh, pipeline is a group of Heroku apps that share the same code base. You know, as I said, that if you wanna, if you have a team of developers who are collaborating on the same app, you wanna allow them to collaborate on the same database and uh, then move on further with the staging processes. So the pipeline features of Heroku would allow you to do it if you are utilizing a or working on a particular set of function for a developer environment the other guy can work on the review or staging purposes. So an app can also be, you can create a pipeline app as well, where you can utilize this functionality and finally, of finally deploy it using CICD stagings and other features provided. So again, we have seen what Heroku private spaces are. These are nothing but an isolated space for your particular app or where your data is hosted, providing a dedicated runtime for your particular apps. So working on the Heroku platform, you would mostly be using this resources, such as the dynos, the build packs, which are used for processing and moving on to slugs and finally 
providing you the response as an application. Then you have the pipelines and private spaces. So these are the few buzzwords or uh, things that you should be aware of while working on the Heroku platform. Now uh, we would quickly see, you know, uh, how you can uh, deploy a custom Node.js app and uh, just give me a second. So we'll quickly see how you can uh, de quickly deploy a custom Node.js app and uh, make it available to your users widely. So again, if you are trying to create a Node.js app, you would need the Node Package Manager and then you would need to type in commands such as npm init over your CLI. I'm presuming given you have the node package manager installed locally and you need to provide a package name you suppose you say demo app and just keep on entering if you want to specify those details you can specify that at a later point of time so so my demo app is ready and this is showing me a json structure which is basically located in package.json app I press enter and my Node.js app is ready. Now, this is just location where my app is present right now. And I would quickly head over to and I'll just open the app. So that is how you create a Node.js app. So for the for ease of things, I have already created an app and I've uh, opened it in my Visual Studio Code. So this is the Node.js app, and uh, I'm gonna deploy it and show you how you can deploy it to your uh, Heroku and make it available to your end users. So after you have performed out the steps you would need to navigate to this directory where you have created this particular app then change your local you need to change your directory head over to that app cd demo app and you know uh, you can do out the changes whatever you need to do so i have already uh, previously i've created a node.js app for demoing purpose, I'll walk you through it. So if you're creating a Node.js app, you would need to install Express, Node.js Express as well, which is nothing but uh, allows you to uh, add or acts as a library over the Node.js framework. So you would need Express if you wanna work with a Node.js app. So, you can check in where this is available. You can install it using NPM Express, so such as whenever you was, if I, whenever you install a Node Package Manager, you can install the NPM Express as well. And this is my JS file, and this is my HTML file. So. I have created this HTML file which includes a URL to my Salesforce community. And my Salesforce community page has few of the components hosted there. And I'm gonna, so this is just a HTML page. And I have my, I, my community page URL here. And uh, so this is my processing file, right? So this would process the index.html file whenever this app is deployed. As you can see, I have used this express function app.get and defining it here as a 
instruction which file it should process or which file it should uh, instantly open up when this app is deployed or which uh, component it should open so you can define it here using the app.get function so once you have your code and everything ready so I'll, I'll just give you a quick brief over here if you are finding any problem to create any of this file uh, you can google it up plenty of resources are available so if you have any questions of how i have created this index.html file so you can just simply create you know you head over to the so this is a, this is the name of my app which i have created simple node app using the npm command so npm in it the app name simple node app so once you press enter this would create the app so that is how i have done it and uh, same json response would be provided to you once you create that app and uh, so once your app is created simply open the app using your code editors or whatever code editors you use so i've opened it using my visual studio code and whenever you open the app you would have something as index.js file you would also need to uh, install express you can check out how to install an express using node package manager and once you have installed express then you can uh, utilize the functions provided by express now this index.html file after opening my app i have just added a simple file like this index2.html so that is how i have added a index Two dot index dot html file so i have created the node.js app first and then i have created a html file you know so pretty simple so in my html i have defined just an iframe which consists an url of my lightning community page which has set of lightning components created already and in the index.js i would provide the instructions to process my index.html file so whenever the app is loaded this would this would execute and it would uh, process the index.html file and display whatever i have defined here so this is my ui this is basically the logic i have defined to process so you can relate it to pretty much a lwc where you write the logic in your javascript file and utilize it so once i have uh, my app ready i can first what i would need to do is uh, commit this file to my git as we would uh, see how uh, you can push an app to github and then deploy it to heroku so heroku leverages git as a ci cd platform where you can post your custom code and moving on to the dashboard you can connect your repository through it and you can deploy the app very easily so that is the standard version control which is being used by heroku so for i have already committed this app what you need to type in here in the terminal is git init and whatever the commands you need to initialize a repository then you need to type in git add then you type in git so after you have created a repository add the repository origin url here so git add then git remote add origin and the or link for your repository if you have created already and after you have defined the url for your git repository you provide an initial message as an initial commit such as git commit minus m any message you want to define it and then 
git push origin master so this uh, if you are aware with how to push your code or how to push your changes to git this would be the few of the commands which you need to leverage and your code would be available in a git repository so if you are facing any problems to deploy app on your repository you can google it out and see how you can deploy or commit a code in your app all right so just few four to five line of commands you need to run and your app would be available here so my app is available here i have already committed the code here in my github repository and you can see the index.js file is here which basically is telling to process the index.html file and in the index.html file i have uh, defined the iframe for my lightning community page right so first step i have created a node.js app then i have pushed my app to the version control git third step for me would be to head over to my hero dashboard and establish a connection with you know establish a connection with my git repository just a sec So this is taking time to load. I don't know why. Uh, so heading over to the app, which I have just created here. So now our step would be to establish the connection between your Heroku and the code which you have committed in your Git repository. So I head over to the dashboard, head over to the app which I have just created. And what I should do is I should head over to the resources tab and check whether I have provisioned a resource or not. I have already provisioned a Postgres database. Now, in order to establish connection with your version control system, head over to the deploy tab, click on GitHub which would basically take you to your github and allow you to establish connection with your heroku app so whatever the repo you have in your uh, github so type that name here so for me it is flow demo so i'll type in the name of the repository in the search box and press on search so the repository which i have stored in github would pop up here and i can quickly establish a connection so i can quickly establish a connection by pressing on connect right so this would again uh, take you that to enable or disable features whether whether you want to enable automatic deployments from github so so this this feature basically would allow you to deploy your app every time a change is made you know so if even if i am changing a single line of code here in my files you know, whether in the index.html file or index.js file 
so whenever a change is made it would deploy the app at that moment of time i'll also show you that with a demo so if you want to enable automatic deployments to your app press on that so it would uh, consume your deployments from the master branch where you have your repo and changes so i have enabled this and now i click on deploy branch which would basically deploy the code available from my github and it would start the build so once the build is completed my app will be available to my end users see how easy it is you are working on a custom app you push it to git you connect your git environment with your heroku you deploy your app once your app is built and deployed it is available to anyone and everyone on the web so my app is ready i'm clicking on view it takes me to this to my app page so my basically what should happen is my index.html should load and it should show the components which are available in my lightning community page so yes this is my lightning community page which i had built just to track covid it uses iframes and there's a lightning component which i made it shows real time data of google maps leveraging the lightning map component and uh, yeah so that easy just few clicks and your app is ready i created that app with the name salesforce demo app hyderabad few moments back i provisioned a postgres database here here i am not using writing or reading data from the database but i have just shown you how you can provision a postgres database right and after creating the node js app locally i have pushed it to my git git repo after creating the node js app locally after pushing it to git repo fourth step for me was to establish connection between the git repo and my heroku platform so i did that i headed over to the resources i headed over to the sorry i headed over to the deploy tab i established the connection uh, with my github repo and uh, yeah so once the github is connected you would define few features if you need it if a single line of code is changed you know so if i want to make a change here and if you want it to be deployed automate automatically to the platform without uh, worrying about to deploy it multiple times so here i'll change demo for salesforce hyderabad user group and if i commit the changes after committing the changes if you head over to the activity tab a uh, new activity would start up showing that you have made changes you know just check that because you have enabled continuous deployment whatever the changes you do is immediately reflected and it shows you tracking of everything happening to your app right so yeah that is pretty much about it and you can see the changes immediately to your app so that is something uh, which you can do and uh, coming back to the presentation we are i believe we are almost running short of time but never mind i'll just quickly walk you through another demo and uh, illustrate how you can leverage and uh, host custom apps and extend your salesforce implementation using heroku coming on to this this is basically very uh, uh, you know i like uh, architecting or uh, architecture attracts me a lot uh, whenever you are designing an app so it is very important that you keep the customer engagement and the business process in mind 
Shasta title says the best apps connect two critical elements. The first being your customer engagement and the second be your business process. So this is just a slide which tells you how you can uh, design your app on Heroku to provide a personalized experience if you are hosting your app on Heroku, there would be no lags or delays because you can scale horizontally and vertically, adding more resources. So, what is scaling horizontally and vertically? I'll uh, discuss with you over the next few slides. And uh, to provide your users with best experience, your UI should always be beautiful, and your app should be running 24 by 7, no matter what the consumption or bandwidth of your consumption for your app is it should be available at any point of time or you should be available or you should be available to or you should be able to make use of customer insights you know for creating a tailored experience for example, uh, you can create uh, journeys if you are using marketing cloud and want to walk you want to walk your customers through a engaging experience. Suppose I like uh, Apple product and I come keep on coming back to your website. So on the recommendations, you might want to sh always show me the Apple products. So leveraging the use, leveraging the data, and leveraging the data and utilizing it to create a journey for engagement to your customers is also possible and we will look into an example how you can do it using the marketing cloud and uh, these are pretty much things you should keep in mind when you are designing an app and uh, posting it on Heroku leveraging the features and available made to you by the platform so yeah uh coming back how you would extract your data from salesforce and leverage it to create journeys for your customers or utilize it for your third-party apps so heroku connect is a standard add-on which is provided by salesforce to synchronize your data presenting your salesforce org and heroku postgres database so you can sync the data presenting your salesforce standard objects or custom objects and map it to a Postgres database which is attached to your Heroku app and your third-party apps can use that data which is present in your Postgres app using SQL queries you know and you can leverage Heroku connect to pull data from your uh, Salesforce org and uh, Heroku Connect, how it works, Heroku Connect. So this schema provides a functional overview of how uh, your Heroku Connect works. So this, this is considering this is a Salesforce org and you have your objects and fields present in your Salesforce org. So a user, in order to configure Heroku Connect, you would need to select a particular object once you create a particular select a particular object you need to select the fields which you want to be retrieved the data stored in the fields which you want to retrieve and you need to create a mapping so once the mapping is created in the postgres database you can pull the data from your salesforce org and in your postgres database your data would be stored in form of schemas right schema in postgres is nothing but will act as a particular org suppose i'm connecting my developer org and leveraging heroku connect to pull data from the org so that data would be stored in a particular schema which is an org in heroku postgres and your data will be stored in tables so to easy easily understand tables are nothing but objects for your reference to Salesforce and your fields will be columns. So this is how Heroku Connect works. You can 
configure firstly you would need to authorize your salesforce or then you would need to create a mapping and then you would need to define the set of fields or the fields whichever you want to pull data from and then you can once the data is available you can make a query and display it on your third party custom apps so that is how a heroku connect will work also talking about Heroku Connect, you can use uh, unidirectional sync and bidirectional sync. Unidirectional would mean you are writing data from your third party application to Salesforce org, as well as reading the data from your Salesforce org, that is unidirectional. So this schema tells you uh, pretty much and gives you the overview of how unidirectional sync will work when Heroku Connect is synchronizing the data. So it would query the data from the Forcecom platform. Uh, uh, timestamp would be attached to it whenever you are querying the data. So, and you can leverage the streaming API, you know, uh, available in objects to leverage a uh, near real time data sync so that your data or any change you make in the data is quickly available on your custom app as well suppose your end users are also trying to enter data and uh, you want to utilize it and have a more analytical view using the salesforce reports or maybe use the data in einstein analytics to analyze outcomes and predictions so what you can do is you can consume the data from third party app store it in the postgres database and then you can you know uh, write the data write that data to your salesforce org so this that is a bi-directional pro process where you are reading data from salesforce and writing data from salesforce right so Heroku Connect will query and update each and every record with real-time use, uh, real-time time uh, mod stamps, and uh, you can leverage Heroku Connect either to bidirectionally sync your data, allowing you to read data from Salesforce or write data from Salesforce or write data to Salesforce from your Postgres database. Uh, if you are defining a unidirectional sync, it would just be one way where you would be extracting your Salesforce data and making it available to your Postgres database and then making it available to your end users by leveraging the SQL queries, which would retrieve data from your Postgres. So unidirectional sync, bidirectional sync, and also you can provision Heroku Connect using uh, using the Heroku dashboard or using the Heroku CLI. And uh, something about polling using Heroku Connect, which I would discuss. So you can uh, this picture shows you how you can you know uh, provision a Heroku Connect resource to your app. So this is leveraging the CLI and provisioning it to your app. So polling is nothing but, you know, uh, uh, extract, extraction of your data over time interval. So polling in Heroku Connect is either immediate if you are using a paid plan or uh, you can in the free version you can minimum define a polling interval of 10 minutes so whatever the changes you are making would be polled uh, after a certain amount of time if you are using the free version of Heroku connect and also you can leverage the streaming api which is a termed as near real-time data sync so whenever the changes are done in your salesforce data it would be immediately reflected in your postgres database so that is what polling means and you have uh, accelerated polling and uh, dedicated polling available for your heroku connect 
So for accelerated polling, you can define a time interval and use the streaming API. And for dedicated polling, you can you know, just uh, for the free versions, basically it would take certain time, certain seconds to reflect the changes or certain amount of time based on the volume of data you have. And this is how you can provision Heroku Connect for your app using the CLI. We'll also quickly see why Heroku Connect and why not any other REST API based integrations or REST API based callouts. Firstly, Heroku Connect does not count against the limits. So it doesn't count against uh, API limits and governor limits for extracting data from your Salesforce. That is one of the uh main reasons which why you can use heroku connect over scripting rest apis uh either way you can use a heroku connect to you know quickly configure the resource to and provision it to your heroku app with just point and click configurations and this has many features as this image shows and you can also use salesforce connect which uh, uses the o data protocol mechanism uh, now it's o data 4.0 open data protocol and but for doing that you would need to again define a external external custom object external object and then create configurations and map the data expose your endpoints and then uh, leverage the rest apis to consume data so that is kind of a hectic task which you don't want to do if you have this feature available so it is just over clicks and allows you to pull your data at a set uh, regular time interval you know so just over clicks and you are ready to pull data from your salesforce org so we will quickly see how you can provision heroku to your uh, heroku connect to your uh, app so go to the resources tab and search for Heroku Connect. It is that easy. And if you want to type in commands, feel free to do it using the Heroku CLI. So even you can type in Heroku, um, as I demonstrated in the slide, you can type in few commands and you can provision Heroku add-ons you can grab the resource you want to provision followed by the name of your app that would provision your Heroku connect for your custom app posted on Heroku so here I'm provisioning using the dashboard just over a few clicks I press on Heroku connect and yes this is ready to be provisioned to my app name Salesforce MO app Hyderabad. So I'll be using the free version as always and you have plans for enterprise level and a shield level as well. You can compare out the plans on Heroku Dev Center uh, website available where you would find a plan for every type of uh, requirements, whatever you wanna follow. So clicking on provision would allow you to provision the resource and yes, this is provisioned for my app. Now, if you head over to, you know, uh, Heroku Connect, if you click on the resource, you would need to configure your Salesforce first in order to pull the data, right? So this would uh, take you to, set up if you click on setup connection you have something called as send a schema name i want my data to be pulled from salesforce the provision connection would target the salesforce org i click on next and uh, It would initialize and you know take me to enter my username and password for my Salesforce org. So it is provisioning the database. 
you would have the option of choosing whether you want to connect it to a sandbox, whether you want to connect to your sandboxes or whether you want to connect to your production or developer edition or for developer edition org. As of now, I want to connect it to my developer edition org. I would choose production. And uh, even you can see the API version for this uh, Heroku Connect add-on is up to date to the spring release and the api version is 48 now previously it was 46 if i'm not wrong you click on authorize and it would ask you for the credentials of your org see how simple it is to connect your salesforce org and pull data to your uh, custom app you know so let me choose my developer edition so here it is I have given the username and password for my dev edition org. Now it would ask me to allow access. You can check the connect uh, Heroku Salesforce. Heroku Connect is asking permissions for your data and whatever the data you would need to provide access to, everything is listed. You can check it out and uh, perform action to allow access to data so click on allow would allow you to your app your custom app posted on eroku to access the data you know so yes now you can see here that the connection between my heroku app my heroku custom app and my salesforce has been established which means that i can pull the data from salesforce and make it available to my custom app right go to mappings in order to pull the data first we have authorized the org please remember and then we are going to create a mapping so creating a mapping would mean you need to select which object you want to pull the data from what are the fields which you are looking for in order to be pulled and so whatever the mapping you create everything whatever the map data you create will be available to your postgres database so if data is available you post into your postgres database means you have database or record stored in your custom app hosted on the heroku platform just over a few clicks right so i want to retrieve information from my account object let's say now you can see this is running a query at my back end and this has brought me to this page of uh, setting the map so as i talked about the polling frequency right uh, so for the free addition as i'm using here it is basically 10 minutes that means if i am making changes to any of the record in my salesforce org it would take a limit of 10 minutes to make changes to my Postgres database. You can even increase the frequency, you know, but it would gradually incre increase the time because it is a free version. And uh, as I said, you have a dedicated polling frequency and you have an accelerated polling frequency, right? Polling is nothing but retrieving data from your Salesforce org or third party external systems once you have authorized it on the Heroku app. So accelerated polling would use your streaming API. This is termed by Salesforce as real-time data sync. And whenever the changes are made to the record, it would be available instantly within a few seconds if you are using this accelerated polling, you know. And uh, this Heroku Connect uh, manages everything and Whenever a change is detected, it will pull your data from the org or destination org or database from wherever you are pulling source database. So your data would be available from your source to your destination database. Here, the destination database for me is a Postgres, and my source is the Salesforce org. So let's quickly go and select few fields and create the mapping and pull the data from salesforce so by default it would add the timestamp date 
so this option is selected by default id is selected is deleted i i would select few more names few more fields such as name and phone and rating of the account so once i have selected this fields right i would I would click on save. So once I click on save, it runs a query and uh, retrieves data from your Salesforce. You know, so it is now retrieving a query is being run. So it would retrieve the number of records I have in my Salesforce org with the number of fields I've created in the mapping. So yes, uh, the data is retrieved and I have all my fields and the number of records mapped here. And it is showing me a status of okay that my data is be, have been retrieved and I can query the data now, you know. And if you head over to overview, you can see that it has retrieved the records from Salesforce. You can have everything, uh, the status and activity track over here, whether your connection is healthy, how many number of records you have retrieved, how many rows are present in your Postgres database right now. And so that is what happens when you have created a mapping. So no logs here because I have not uh, created anything, you know. So these are my records available. These are my records of account records, right? So these are my name of the account records, which I have just pulled in from Salesforce. So you can expose this database where I have stored the data to a third party custom apps and you know uh, you can quickly allow it to be consumed by your third party apps as well and you can run sql queries in order to display your data uh, in the heroku postgres database right so this is how you can establish a connection between your Heroku app and your Salesforce org. Coming back to the slide. So that is how you can, you know, uh, extend your Salesforce data into your custom apps and deliver tailored experiences using Heroku Connect. So these are the steps you need to follow. You need to configure Heroku Connect first by heading over to the dashboard. You need to uh, authorize your org first and then uh, you need to create a mapping. Then you need to, if you are creating a data clips, data clips is another pro, uh, resource which would allow you to query your data in say uh, Postgres using SQL. So, and you can deploy changes over your custom app using the git version control. So let's quickly create a data clip. Just a second.
so once you have created your data clip you can query the data using your sql commands right So even you can uh, create your own credentials to you know uh, access to authorize your database and provide access to your uh, third party app users using the credentials as well so that is how you can uh, do uh pro provision a heroku connect resource with your custom app and uh, query your data from salesforce store it in your postgres database query it using sql and uh, you can even deploy changes using git providing you have uh, configured the automatic deployments in your heroku app so we walk through the small demo and uh, that is how the deployment of a custom app looks like. You deploy a custom app using Git. Basically, you have the option to connect a Git repository with your Heroku, and you can deploy your custom app. You're leveraging Git and Heroku CLI as well. And Heroku supports continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment which allows you to make changes and uh, deploy changes instantly to your users leveraging git version controlling so that is how those are the few features which are provided uh, when you are leveraging and hosting an app in the heroku platform right so these are the few things which you can do and leverage it and few things which heroku allows you to do and few questions if you have in your mind which heroku allows you to say yes you know uh, so the dashboard would allow you to keep a track of everything and whatever the activities are happening related to your app. And uh, this would also give you an overview of your billing of the resources and uh, how much tra traffic your app is consuming and everything and anything you need to know about your app would be provided to you so these are a few other uh, things which heroku makes you uh, answer with the features available right uh, so that's a uh, few things we can do as it is a fully managed platform you need not worry about the infrastructure and you can easily post app to it so this is giving an overview of how you can uh, deploy applications on heroku your custom apps on heroku you have you are the programmer you write your source code locally then you define the proc, proc file proc file is nothing but instructions which files or components needs to be invoked or processed when your app is deployed on the Heroku platform. So once you have defined and uh, completed develop development of your app locally, commit your app to version control Git. Now, once you have committed your code to Git, next is the build phase. So once you have established connection between your Heroku app and uh, the source code for your custom app which you have built 
the slugs and build pack comes into picture. So this, the build packs would basically compile your source code, pass it on to slug for compressing and uh, it would process the outcome as a package. And then it would move on to the, you know, uh, once the compilation is done, once the process file is ready, then it is, uh, that when once you click on deploy your app, the app is available to your end users. This is how the flow is, or this is how the flow basically works. And uh, yeah, so firstly, you develop locally, then you commit your changes to Git, then you deploy your uh, source code to your uh, custom app hosted on the Heroku platform, which compiles code, does everything, process everything out, and once you click on deploy, the app is easily and readily available to your users to uh, deploy, you know, and available to your users immediately. So the heart of any application is your database. And as we know, Heroku leverages the Postgres database. So uh, Postgres admin is also a third party tool which you can install on your system and establish connection with your Heroku account and which will allow you to query the data locally over that. So this is a third party tool which can be used either to create a table or access the data from your Heroku Postgres. Right, and you can also retrieve the data using SQL queries in the PG admin tool. And uh, these are the few features which you can leverage if you're using a Postgres admin tool. Uh, we will quickly walk through a different example which we have, which I have deployed. And I'll quickly run through, you know, how you can uh, run a SQL query and uh, retrieve your data from the Postgres. Right. So once you have uh, provisioned a data clip, you can uh, add it to your uh, Heroku app. Basically, you need to go over resources, provision uh, data clip, and uh, and it would be available to your app. So once you have provisioned the data clip, you can run queries, you know, to retrieve SQL queries to retrieve data from your Postgres database. So just a second, let it load. So I have to find a name here for my database. I want to retrieve the contacts available in my Salesforce org. And here I write for the SQL query, which which would show me the list of contacts which I have in my Postgres database. Basically, all the data is taken from Salesforce, stored in a Postgres database, and then you know displayed here. So if I click on Save and Run, it would show me the list of uh, contacts with the following fields, such as first name, last name, and email. Actually, do and run a query. 
so save and run it would show me the first name of the contact so this data is not stored in salesforce but it is synchronized in my postgres database and it is available to me in heroku dashboard itself in my heroku data clip attached to my heroku app so i'm not running a query in my salesforce or or something or neither it is counting against the limit so that's how data is quickly for sql queries in heroku postgres and also you have the options to export or download the data in csv and json format as well and you have if you press on refresh the urls would change the access token and your identifiers to access the data would change up so these are the few features which are provided by data clips basically and uh, so that was one of my app which i have hosted over the heroku platform and i pulled the data using uh, heroku connect all contacts data and if i want to you know uh, change anything or make any changes so i would quickly go up to if you want if i want to make any change here and commit change it would be tracked immediately in my heroku app and a log will be available to me that you have made and it would be deployed again right so so there's a ruby application which i have hosted in uh, heroku one of the many languages supported by heroku such as ruby python golang java everything this is a ruby application which i have hosted and you can see it is giving me the list of uh, getting me the contacts data and i want to display it over a custom ui so you can define whatever data you want to get through the table specify the table name for me it is salesforce dot contact uh, getting the list of contacts storing it in postgres and then uh, displaying it over right so this is the file if i make any changes would be deployed again and uh, let's quickly open this app which i have hosted over my uh, heroku platform so let me let me go to my dashboard and open the app and it will show you the list of contacts in a different ui that is a ruby app so i've basically created it locally then deployed it to git and then i have established a connection with my custom app available on heroku so here it is i'll open the app so this is an open source app you can even clone and poke the repository and try it out on your own whatever you want to try so this is how it looks you can uh, find the source code source code on github and make a clone or make a fork of it and make changes to it and you can deploy the same on heroku to your custom app you know and so this code basically uh, whatever the changes i have made here in the app dot uh, ruby file would allow me to view the list of contacts in a custom ui manner so if i want to change it to account i can change it to account and it would give me the account data provided i have the mapping already for the account object so just easy as that uh, i've opened the app uh here and i want to see the list of contacts from my postgres database right so this is the data which is being displayed from the postgres database and this is a complete custom app hosted on the heroku platform leveraging the resources such as heroku postgres heroku connect uh, and data clips so these 
app is uh, Ruby, developed on Ruby and you know, hosted on the Heroku platform, leveraging data from the Salesforce org and uh, displaying it to you in a custom manner. So this is a open source uh, thing which you can clone from GitHub. I'll be sharing up the links and uh, probably Roshan or Swati or uh, might be will be sharing it with you along with the recording and the presentation, whatever I have discussed today. So you can clone the repository from uh, Git and do whatever changes you want to do. So last topic for today's uh, discussion, designing and approaches you can do to design and deploy a custom app on the Heroku platform. So uh, Jim, Jim Bari is a Salesforce customer and uh, they use Marketing Cloud and uh, they wanted to provide a custom user journey to their users. So they are using Marketing Cloud and uh, Marketing Cloud Connector is available on the App Exchange, which you can use and leverage to, uh, you know, connect uh, Heroku to your Marketing Cloud org. So once the APIs are exposed, you can leverage Heroku Connect to establish connection with your marketing cloud org. And so the use case here is they wanted to create customer journeys for their users. So one user might be interested in a particular product and the other might be not. So knowing their interests and creating a personalized journey over the marketing cloud platform is leveraged using Heroku Connect. And if I'm a customer, I go to the website, I uh, couldn't find something. Uh, if I am facing some problems, I would uh, probably enter a case on their website, right? So if you are, they are, they were using Service Cloud to log in the cases and requests coming into them, coming to them from their third party website or app. So using Heroku Connect and uh, they were leveraging and pulling up data from the market from their marketing cloud instance and their service cloud instance into their custom Heroku app. So also they were using Einstein analytics to you know have an analytical view of the data, the outcomes of their customer data and predictions where they can do much better. So once this data is pulled on pulled from the Salesforce orgs. In this case, they were using a marketing cloud org and service cloud org. It is stored in the Postgres database cluster. Now, in order to make use of the data, they were using a Postgres resource. They were using SQL based queries to retrieve data and uh, make it available to use to analyze and uh, to pass it on to Einstein analytics here you can see the synchronization of data is bi-directional and not unidirectional so it is pulling the data from your marketing cloud or from your uh, service cloud service cloud different clouds and it is pulling the data from your cl uh, different clouds and you know it is storing it into the Postgres database and then it is finally writing or pushing the data into your org again to make it an available to you for your Einstein analytics to give you a high throughput of uh, data or fast experience to make it available for Einstein analytics. And uh, so they had the uh, analytics ready on a go. So their website, basically custom app, stood on Heroku, pulling data from different clouds, storing it in Postgres, storing data from their website given by their customers, creating a specific journey for their customers using Marketing Cloud, storing it in Postgres, 
writing it back uh, to the uh, orgs and you know uh, using that response to create a personalized journey using the heroku platform so they had created various uh, programs or cam campaigns which they were leveraging by the data which they were collecting from their website so they had a commerce cloud storefront which allows you to design and deploy applications uh, commerce 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 based applications basically and collecting the data to postgres sending it up to marketing cloud different different clouds for enhancing and personalizing the journeys rewriting it back uh, creating an analytics and creating for very personalized campaigns for their users to you know for a very high engaging customer experience so this is a architecture of how you can uh, design applications on the heroku platform which are highly available and scalable so i scalable would mean adding off more resources such as dynos right so scaling again is of two types scaling horizontally and scaling vertically scaling horizontally would mean you keep on adding more more of the same dynos suppose if you have a one of dino 1x dino you in order to scale your app you add another 1x dino to your app scaling vertically would mean that you upgrade your app to a different type of dino which would basically enhance up the performance and uh, make it a, make your app highly available and running no matter what the consumption rate is so that is two types of uh, scaling mechanisms which you can follow by adding and provisioning of resources so always keep in mind that uh, your uh, business depends on the users your app should be highly available that is the foremost thing you can define auto scaling rules as you can define them in aws ec2 instances as well in heroku you can do the same where you can define some automation rules where you can uh, define the threshold level that if this computing resources or if your website consumption is more and if it needs to uh, add more resources if a particular threshold limit is exceeded you can quickly scale up using the dynos available either you can scale up vertically or you can scale horizontally it is always uh, consider to scale vertically as a best practice and you should keep in some of these things when designing an app on heroku you should be able to manage your changes through a version control efficiently uh, track your activities over the heroku dashboard uh, audit your data query your data available in the postgres database and uh, make it available to your third party app using the credentials and the uris provided in the postgres database so we have seen that how it can be done and that's it for today guys too much lengthy session i'm sorry for that i couldn't cover it up over to you roshan and uh, if you have any questions to take in we can take it up now thank you so much abhi uh Hope you had a good breakfast and uh, you're up for a good lunch as well because I think uh, oh. that was a lot of energy. That was a lot of energy required right. to. I was, was, you did cover a lot of uh, topics and uh, it was great yes, to see great. Uh, enthusiasm um, amongst the participants as well. So yeah, yeah I, get I know <laughs> it's not too late and you covered most things, uh, guys. It's it's not the end of uh, everything. We will still have a lot of uh, you know. topics or discussions around this but questions firstly thank you shubham so questions. much if you are still here yeah 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 i uh, see he has answered say, most say of the questions <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah thank you so much shubham uh, for easing it out for uh, us in terms of time and for uh, abhirup as well and uh, it was a go very good support from your side if you are still here i would say Put on your video. Say hello to everyone, and uh, it will be. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. 
no very uh, uh, it was just my small bit of vision to what the good work uh, community is being doing and being led by you thank you very much for uh, so thank you for, uh, which we are all getting even learning in this lockdowns thank you thanks to abiru for this informative session thank yes, you thank you all this so uh, if we still have questions i would say i i am not sure how many open questions do we still have abiru if you if you've got a couple of minutes i would say have a look at the chat sure 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 uh, sure let me i think very much the first half of it shubham has answered uh, okay the, the last couple of them, i do not check the most recent ones but uh, what is it is talking about so mr ram has asked about the scalability of the app and then uh, he is asking if he has missed something what has he missed we did not create any process file before committing our okay yeah yeah, yeah. We... Uh, so i see that question so yes uh, okay. a process file you can uh, define it in your uh, uh, version control when you are deploying it using uh, your git version control basically you can define the process file there uh, i'll just show you up how it would look so you can just define a profile whenever you are doing it so this would just give an instruction which part of your uh, code should get started when it is deployed so you can define that in prop file so i'll show you another one the, for the node js app which i created and deployed so you can head over to your uh, git repository and uh, add a prop file easily one second yes so you can define which part of the app should start first you know and just command to start your app for suppose if i wanted to start index.js in my prop file i would need to define a node index.js right so yeah here i would uh, in my prop file i would have defined a node index.js so once you have defined the prop file you can deploy it and uh, make it uh, easily available even if you have not defined the prop file it doesn't matter you can always uh, manually run your app you can open up your app and uh, later you can define the prop file if you want to but it is always a best practice to define the prop file where you would want your app to start functioning so you can definitely do it out so i hope that answers your question yes i think it pretty much does that unless uh, mr ram has more and i was just checking all the other ones yes i think he's confirmed that and uh, all the other ones are pretty much answered uh, but i still want to highlight one more thing uh, shubham if you're still here uh, shubham is is a colleague of abiru and it's great to see the support and i think it, it gives a, it it is an it is a good uh, taking for us as well uh, when we're doing these kind of uh, sessions we have some sorry to sorry to interrupt you roshan uh, guys for all of you here shubham is a certified technical architect one oh, of the very it? few oh, in india if you are not aware so he's been a cta since many years and you know uh, i always look forward to him and he is a great uh mind i would say he always inspires people to do bit so I, I, I always look forward and reach out to him abiru 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 wait a second wait a second there is some confusion i am still striving towards that okay uh, it's been many years i'm one step away from it but uh, yeah when it was even in the previous version of it and uh, i'm still uh, hunting for it let's see when i'll knock it down but uh, nevertheless uh, this was your session your day and uh, all the discussion would be around that and the deaf community i am uh, i'm i just apologies no, from my reason, side i'm I, making I, very the point yeah. i was trying to yeah, make yeah. here was okay i think thanks for correcting that because yeah. yes that was in the statement but the point i was trying to make is it's good to see the support and uh, you know when, when this happens the, the amount of questions that were answered parallelly 
uh, it's a good taking for us as well for the community for us leaders who are doing this because next we will try to see if we can have you know two people who can battle it support and uh, have a very smooth ongoing because we, we do it during the session people understand it better rather than waiting for the end and uh, have that small, one small question answered so that's why i said it's it's great and uh, it's, uh, yeah I, I, I'll stop there about you because I think it should be more about Abhiru now. All right, so yes, uh, that's true. Thank you, best, thank you, Roshan, and uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, Roshan, and I would just say, office. yes, yeah, go ahead. We have been, uh, we have seen multiple years together, but uh, as this community will bring in a uh, lot of this uh, common minds, all. Uh, trying to learn and hit more about Salesforce. These sessions and whatever are the future sessions, uh, just encourage your team, your office group, your fellow Salesforce colleagues to join in and spread uh, more love for the community and for the leaders who are leading it. So uh, they are creating these learning opportunities for all of us, even in this lockdown situation. And it is quite motivating. So thank you, Roshan. Thank you, Swati, and all the dev leaders. And Abhirup, it was a too technical, highly informative session. Thank you very much. And thank you, yeah, let's, thank you. let's go for the trailhead. What do you call it? Trailhead thon, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so that's a lot of love shown. Thank you so much. We are honored. Uh, without wasting any further time, I think we're nine minutes away. We want to start at 1230, but it's okay. So there's a link, guys, in the in the chat. If you've already not registered, I'll quickly tell you what this is about. So we've prepared three different projects. Last time it was only one. And we said, OK, there are some of them who have already finished them or we partially. So uh, right now we've got, like I said, we have got three options. Uh, we're going to show up the projects uh, once the registrations are done. Yeah, Swati has put the link in the chat. And the way it works is obviously we've got like one hour. They are all ideally given one hour uh, to finish those projects. Uh, whoever finishes the first, we, we just have to reply. Swati, maybe you can also, thanks, Shubham. Uh, uh, Swati, you can also maybe put the email address that they should write. So once you finish your uh, project, you've got to reply back uh, or reply to that email, which Swati has put, it's Swati's email. Uh, that will give us, you know, uh, time. So we always have to go back and make sure that we are not, so we don't want people to already have finished it in the past and then uh you know you use that as use that in the competition that's not fair for anybody so we wouldn't be announcing right away we, we've done this even last time we've got certain uh, inputs or, or mails last week we want to do the same next week is our finale uh i'm going to read out some tweets as well while we wait for registrations and other things to come up uh the next week is when we'll probably you know go through and so please don't try to already bring in pre-finished trailheads or trails uh, that's why we have put three options. One of them is trailheads. So the good uh, one of the one of these trailheads is actually about Heroku, which is to ensure that you can actually use this learning right. You know, it's like an immediate uh, opportunity to get your hands into the trail and uh, see if uh, you know see how much you've learned and uh, interact more if need by if need be while while Abhirup is still with us. So yeah, one of that is Heroku. That's a hint. Hope uh, that is useful. So we'll take, just take four minutes. It's 12.41, 12.45, four more minutes to for all of you to uh, register if you haven't yet. Okay. And uh, maybe 12.45, Swati will uh, share the link. So there is a link to these three option, three projects. Swati, do you want to share the screen and put show that? I mean, not now, but maybe at 12.45. When you put the link, maybe you want to show up, show it up on the screen. You can share your screen. And uh, that's that's when we kick it off. Anybody has questions, you can still post. But yeah, take four minutes to register. Or take a, take a quick break if you haven't. I know it's a long one. Uh, you have got uh, time to start. And yeah, it's it's race, uh, it's a learning one. Uh, it was a good one last week. I hope it's even better this time. All right, what else? So yeah, in this meanwhile, let me read out some tweets that I've got. So because we always do this tweet part, I'm only reading the ones with, we have, we've got hashtag team ka tadga tag because that's what our filter criteria was. I'll start from... Uh, uh, Russian, why don't you share your screen? screen? Oh, you want to share? Okay, good. Yeah, you share. I'm done, right? So 
Thank you guys. Thank you for the opportunity to present. Thank you, Roshan. Thank you, Swati, and everyone the in the anywhere. organizers team. Bye. You're not going anywhere. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go anywhere. Yes. Roshan, I'm just, you, I'm just telling you. Uh, oh, thank I thought you were signing. No, 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 no. I'm just telling you every to all the organizers for providing me a chance to present at the community. And uh, thank you again so very much. I was uh, I was looking forward to this topic to present to you all at a community level, but due to this lockdown, that couldn't happen in the past few months. But today is a great day, and I had the chance to do it. Thank you so much, Roshan, Swati, Gaurav, and everyone in the organizers team who made me do yeah, this today. Let you thank you. The praise for another 30 minutes, but it will be only interesting only for me. Otherwise, we'll get bored. So, uh, okay. I'll stop the recording. Let me just figure out. Uh, stop.